Rick Sosby here again with ATV.com, and we're here with the Kawasaki Mule Pro FX LE model and the Honda Pioneer 1000 EPS. We've had an opportunity to test both of these vehicles in the exact same terrain and conditions over the last couple of days, and we just thought it would be cool to bring them together to give you a little bit of a comparison. So when we talk about similarities between these machines, basically towing, 2,000 pound capacity, bed capacity, 1,000 pounds. They both have preload adjustable shocks, but the Kawasaki has preload adjustable on the front and rear, and the Honda only has preload adjustable on the rear of the machine. There is no adjustment on the front shocks of the front of this Honda. Both of these machines actually ride on a double wishbone or independent suspension, dual A-arm suspension, however you want to call it. So as far as suspension travel, the Honda leads the group with 10.6 in the front and 10 inches in the rear, whereas the Kawasaki has 8.7 front and rear. So when we're talking in terms of similarities, that's about where they end. Now let's look at some of the differences. And we can't focus on these machines in a comparison without looking at the engines. We have a 999cc, 72 horsepower power plant over here. We have a three cylinder, 47 horsepower, 812cc engine in the Kawasaki Mule. And there are also differences in the transmission. Obviously Honda Pioneer comes with a DCT transmission or dual clutch transmission and the Kawasaki Mule has a belt-driven transmission. Now, the vast difference between these two is obviously the belt or the gear, but as an added feature for the Honda, you have automatic mode or manual mode, and this transmission is actually manually shifted or up or down via paddles under the steering wheel. So one of the obvious differences that you're gonna notice about these two is their length. The Kawasaki Mule is obviously longer. It has a 92 inch wheelbase where the Honda Pioneer comes in at 80.2 inches of wheelbase. So you get a little bit longer chassis, but we think that's because the six seat version of this mule is actually built on the same chassis. Another obvious difference that is not so obvious is the weight of these machines. This machine is built so robust, so heavy. It comes in over 1,800 pounds, where the Honda Pioneer comes in about 1,550. So you're looking at about a 250 pound difference in weight, but you have to consider the extreme construction in the steel bed and the steel frame of the Kawasaki Mule. When you think in terms of working, you think in terms of bringing your gloves or bringing your keys or maybe a cell phone, some way to connect to the world. So we're looking at storage. The Kawasaki Mule and the Honda Pioneer have about the same amount of storage. There's really no under seat storage. There's a glove box in each one of them and a couple of pockets where you might put a cell phone or some keys. And, and you do have a drink holder as well, but that's about the limit when it comes to actually storing gear inside the cab. So when you think of terms of maintenance or serviceability, you want to be able to access things. My personal opinion is there's a lot more access under the bed of this Kawasaki. You lift the bed up, everything is in the wide open. The Honda is also easily accessible, but you do have to have some special tools to remove some plastic panels to actually get into the engine. When you look at the bed, as far as dividing up the bed and being able to contain loads in particular areas, the Kawasaki Mule actually will hold a full pallet. It's a pallet. It's a lot longer bed. There's a lot more areas to divide up. The Honda bed does have divisionary segments molded into the bed, so you can do similar activities with this particular bed, and they both haul a thousand pounds. So when you think of terms of seating, all right, so the Kawasaki Mule has this flat bench seat that is extremely comfortable. But when you look at the Honda Pioneer seating, it is more sculpted for individuality. You have three separate segments for those three passengers. There are shoulder bolsters in both units. However, you tend to slide side to side on the Kawasaki seat because it is so flat, even though it is very comfortable. So one thing we do have to take into consideration is that this is the LE model. It is a limited edition, so there's a couple of extra features here that you don't get on a 
standard model or maybe even a mid-grade model that we would compare to this Honda Pioneer 1000. And those accessories are LED headlights, uh, you get a roof, you get custom wheels, and all of that comes into a price point of $14,200 compared to Honda's $15,400 price tag for their Honda Pioneer. So in our industry, we can't help talking about these machines that we do not mention power. When you look at a 999cc engine with 72 horsepower compared to an 812cc engine with 47 horsepower, there seems to be on paper a big difference there. And you can absolutely feel that difference in certain situations. So here's where we divide that up. When we're trailering, when we're hauling, working with this machine, you can absolutely tell no difference in the power. It still has plenty of torque. It still has plenty of pull. When you look at the Honda, obviously you have a little bit larger displacement, a little bit larger horsepower number, but you also tend to get a little more jumpy power. We, we felt like you could barely touch the throttle in the Honda without it lurching or lunging forward at times, which can be overwhelming in a working situation. The engine braking on both of these machines is phenomenal. It actually was surprising to us that these two machines would slow your load down coming downhill with a loaded trailer. So as far as trail manners between these machines, I would have to say that the Kawasaki could be a little bit more comfortable for me on the trails. Unfortunately, the length of this machine tends to get hung up on some of the sharper uh, water brakes or things like that in the trail. Now the Honda has a, an incredible amount of power. It's very sporty. There's, the steering seems to be a little more responsive on the tighter trails. As for the Honda's trail manners, it's a very sporty feel. Obviously there's a lot of pep in that 999 cc engine and um, I, I would say that it feels great on the tighter trails. The shorter wheelbase works well for water brakes, creek crossings, um, and, and neither one of these machines give us any trouble on the trail until we got to those sharp water brakes. So here we are. We've compared both of these vehicles. We rode them on similar terrain. It's time to pick a winner. In my heart, if I need a work vehicle, if I want something that's going to be robust, powerful, towing, hauling capability, I'm going to go with the Kawasaki Mule. However, if you're a 50-50 guy, you work a little bit, you like to play hard, the Honda Pioneer is going to be the choice. The sporty motor, the bolstered seating, all things like that work well for that guy who does like to double up and work and play in his vehicle. So as usual, if you want to learn anything more about these vehicles, visit ATV.com, check out the reviews, or go by your local dealer. You have to make that decision. Sit in the vehicle, drive the vehicle if you get a chance to, and we hope to see you later on down the trail.